Hi, everybody. Welcome to my talk. My name is Daniel Rosses. I'm a software engineer intern at, over at IBM, and I work on the business transformation services team. So what we do is we actively look towards creating software and infrastructure patterns to address real world sort of business problems that we see. And that's what led us to creating this such pattern, which is integrating a credit card, uh, creating a credit card processor using Apache Ignite as well as Apache Kafka. So we started with just having Kafka and we important to acknowledge the limitations we had. So Kafka is very good at stream processing. It is very fast, but by design, Kafka is not a database. You can't run queries on the messages on your brokers, you can't make uh, SQL uh, commands and issue them towards the broker. So Kafka is very limited in terms of creating an entire end-to-end -end pattern with itself. So that's why we look towards integrating Kafka with a, another technology. And that technology that we decided upon was Apache Ignite. So the main reasons we looked towards Ignite was one, the in-memory database aspect of it, making it very quick was very appealing. Also having the SQL APIs made it also appealing because with a credit card uh, processor, you might be able to want to create a web application or REST API or something like that to be actually, to actually easily make queries to that data. And then finally, uh, the continuous queries uh, capability, we also found very appealing because since we are making not just a credit card, say sync or reader, but making a processor to actually detect uh, aspects about the credit card transaction, being able to run a continuous query in memory on the Ignite nodes themselves was uh, very appealing to us. So this is the architecture that we came up in the pipeline for this uh, pattern that we created. It will start off in the top left corner in that buy-in transactions topic. That acts as sort of a raw landing zone for all of our produced credit card transaction messages. From there, we have a, it says a grid game because IBM uses a grid game, which is just a platform built upon Ignite. But for our presentation, as well as the actual assets, Ignite and grid game can be used interchangeably and there would be no problem. But back to this, the connector we use is a Ignite Sync connector, which will then read all the messages that are come into our buying transactions topic and produce them to a corresponding topic cache, which will contain all the same entries as that message does. From there, we have our continuous query running, which will detect any new additions into that topic cache that we created for that buying for those buy-in messages. And then it will then check to see if there is a fraud flag set to yes or no on each of those messages. If the message is fraudulent, so that flag is set to yes, it will then create uh, an entry into the fraud cache, which is that fraudulent message. And then the final step in this pipeline is the source connector, the Ignite source connector detects all changes on the fraud cache, so any new entries into there, and it will then produce uh, those entries as messages to the fraud transaction topic back in Kafka. That's sort of completing our input to Kafka, output to Kafka sort of pipeline. And also on top of that, the reason why we found uh, Ignite so appealing is we could also create that REST API to query, uh, to query the messages inside of those caches and display them on a sort of a sample web application that we created. So now I will jump into the actual demonstration uh, showing this end-to-end -end pipeline. Okay, so here we are. This is the sort of just giving an overview of the infrastructure we have set up to run our Ignite cluster. Is we have it up on a Red Hat, uh, a Red Hat OpenShift cluster up on IBM Cloud. So you can see here our Ignite cluster contain, uh, consists of two nodes. We also have an on-premises uh, control center deployed. So we have our front end and back end for that. We then also have a API that we created on for our Ignite uh, instances, which uh, talks to or talks to, communicates with the caches that we have created uh, that has the credit card information. And then finally, we have a sample web application which consumes from that API and displays the credit card transactions to the user. So doing a quick brief overview of that, this is our control center. 
uh, we have one coordinator, one server, which is our two working Ignite nodes, and then two client nodes, which is our sync and source connectors that I had previously talked about. And then here, this is our web application. We can see there is no transactions yet. And we can confirm that by going into the actual caches. This would be our raw cache where we have all our messages. And we can see no messages. And then in our fraudulent, we can also see no fraud entries. So now, now that I've shown all the infrastructure and how it's set up, we can now actually start producing messages to the topic and having this pipeline, I guess, come to life. So these two terminal windows, this one represents the raw topic, which will produce, show all the messages being produced. And this one is the one we saw at the end, which will only have the fraudulent messages inside of it. So I will then now turn on our producer. So I just ping one of our applications, which will uh, turn on and start producing uh, credit card transactions, 500 a second. So going back to our topic, we can see we're producing tons and tons of just credit card transactions, 500 a second. And these are the raw top messages. And then if we go here, we can see we're producing not nearly as many, but we are still producing fraudulent transactions that are making their way through the pipeline and going to the end. And we can then also see that here. So if we go back to the uh, control center, we can then run these SQL queries on our caches and see that we have now produced a lot of cache entries into the raw one with, if we count the amount that are actually fraud, we can see there's 15. And then if we go to the corresponding, uh, corresponding fraud uh, cache where all the frauds and transactions should move over, we can see um, all the fraud messages that got put into this cache. So we can see there is a ton. And we can check again and see that there's actually 43. The reason for this is we're still running in the background our uh, data producer. So if we stop the data producer and now do a quick comparison, you can see here we have 60 fraudulent messages in our initial cache and 60 fraudulent transactions in our fraud cache. So that shows that one-to-one -one mapping for our frauds going across into the different caches is working. And then finally, just to finish off, we can show this functionality of our web application, which now is able to make those RESTR calls, which executes SQL queries and display these credit card transaction information. And this sort of acts as a stand-in almost to sort of any application that would consume from a API uh, for these credit card transaction information. Thus sort of completing our entire pipeline with Apache Kafka and Apache Ignite, working together to create a entire credit card transactions uh, produ uh, producer and also processor. So thank you for listening. And uh, I guess now we'll start any questions. Great. Daniel, thank you. Let's bring you back onto the stage. So um, I see already that we do have um, a question. I, it might be a little bit of a, a general question, but let's see if you can answer it anyway. Um, it's from sure. um, Houston Tran, um, and you should see the question there. So the question is, can Ignite send real-time change log of a table to Kafka topic or in any way to read this change? Uh, I think you should be able to, the way we have it set up with our service is that it has basically an event listener for any entry going into, uh, any entry that goes into the cache that's sent in through that sync connector, it will then um, trigger an event. So then you could, you could have it so that like any time uh, from the sync connector, a new message is put into the cache, you could just output that again to a new topic. So this should be... Um, possible the very similar architecture that we have set up. Great. OK. Um, and here's another question um, from Aruna Mutsami. Is the fraud check detail stored in Ignite? So <clears throat> if I'm interpreting this question uh, correctly, so currently right now, um, well, I, as I mentioned, there's like that fraud cache that holds all the fraudulent transactions, but the fraud check right now is only um, on the actual messages for the credit card. It will have an is fraud uh, field, which is yes or no. 
So like the fraud check itself right now, just for this proof of concept is a very, um, is a very sort of naive check where it'll just be a Boolean check, yes or no. And then we'll put it into that new cache if it is, or if it isn't, it'll just uh, do nothing. Great. Okay. I hope that answers your question, Aruna. Um, there is um, another question from Jeremy, a few related questions actually. So what order of magnitude, number of features, number of transactions do your algorithms process? And how does it enable better fraud detection? How does that challenge the technical implementation architecture? For sure. So each message itself has around, I would say, I guess, depending on like 20 to 30 fields, depending on like what we have set process. And as you saw, we make, we can produce a lot, a lot of transactions, like 500 a second, and those will all get, go through the, um, the cluster actually very quickly. And um, the, as I mentioned previously, our algorithm for this demo specifically is very naive. It will just do a binary check to see if it is a yes or no on that is fraud field. We've actually, um, this was more recently, and I guess I'll just uh, say this part, but we've actually implemented more um, sophisticated logic for processing if it's fraud or not to do better fraud detection by using actual ML models and uh, using grid gain sort of in uh, built-in uh, TensorFlow integration. So that sort of is another um, aspect to the uh, making the service more sophisticated. So it's incrementally getting more and more, I guess, sophisticated. But now we just need to, if we were to implant just better and better uh, TensorFlow models for fraud detection, I guess would now be our limit. And I guess just to quickly hit the last one, um, the technical implementations, The we actually did run into an issue before where we were having trouble writing all our messages to the cache because we weren't doing it asynchronously, asynchronously before. So although the um, event listener was picking up on every time an entry was added or any changes in the cache, the actual writing to the new cache was um, blocking each other and was causing problems with not having like a one-to-one -one mapping between the two. But then we just switched it around. So we were doing asynchronous uh, writes every time an event, on an event change. And then uh, that sort of solved that problem. Great. Okay, thank you. And then um, there's one other question which comes from me. <laughs> so um, <laughs> did, did you have any, any hiccups or were there any pitfalls that you faced um, while developing? So uh, uh, I, mean, I think the bringing together yeah, Kafka and, and Ignite and, and um, you know, in, in this pipeline, was there anything that... Uh, that kind of made life very difficult or, or that you had to overcome? Yeah, so on the development side of this one, the actual the hardest part wasn't the code. If you, uh, the service itself, as well as the um, infrastructure is not a lot of lines of code or a lot of configurations, it's mostly just figuring out, integrating all these technologies together. So being able to integrate Kafka as long, as well as the connector, as well as with grid gain and making sure that we can get that communication working correctly and configuring our caches properly. So they were getting uh, synced and sourced in by the connectors and making it actually SQL queryable. So making all those sort of uh, connections between those uh, the technologies was, I would say, probably the hardest part of the development side. Great. Okay. And I mean, you've kind of almost um, answered this question, um, but Saif actually asked it just as, as you were talking. So I'm going to put it anyway, because it's kind of a, um, it's a little bit of a continuation of what you were just saying. Um, great presentation, Daniel. Question, how was your overall experience with Ignite and integrating it with Kafka Streams? So that's a follow on from what you were just saying. Yeah, for sure. So like I mentioned before, once you get over sort of that initial uh, hurdle of understanding the integrations and like getting the configurations correct between say uh, Kafka and Ignite, as well as like understanding how the connectors work uh, in conjunction with both of them, the actual coding aspect was very easy and the developing on that side was very easy. It was just um, overwriting this, like implementing uh, the libraries that uh, Ignite slash Brigainer had already provided and just the logic itself in the, was not too, too bad to do. So I would say overall is a pretty good experience. Great. Good. Well, Daniel, that's all we've got time for, I think. Um, thank you so much for your talk and thank you so much for answering the questions. Um, I do hope you're gonna stick around and enjoy the rest of the day.